Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, whether we're buying a pair of shoes, selecting a restaurant, choosing a laptop, setting up our first bank account, everyday decisions, from the run of the mill to the life-changing challenges of balancing relationship, career, and individual goals, have become more and more complex as a result of the overwhelming abundance of choice with which we are confronted. We assume that more choice means better options and greater satisfaction. But there is a downside to prolific choice. This is my father, Alfred. Al to his friends. Dad's a sofa surfer. He's a quiet kind of guy. Nothing bothers him much, except when he has to make important buying decisions. My sister, Kelly. In her head, she's the next Taylor Swift. She's a fashion junkie, always dressed to kill, or at least wound the hot guys in the neighborhood. And like my dad, she was born to shop. On Saturday afternoons, she hangs out in the makeup stores, driving the sales girls crazy, endlessly trying out lipsticks and nail polish. And here you have my older brother, George. Of course, we call him Georgie, which he absolutely hates. Hi, George. His thing is smartphones, endlessly trawling the internet, comparing the latest models, switching constantly from one website to another, anxiously biting his nails. you think he was on a quest for the Holy Grail. And that's me, Archie Weaver. But everyone calls me A.W. Well, can you give me some money? What? Again? I like to observe my family, listen to all their verbal sparring. How much this time? I really want to find out why they do the things they do. And when I figure it out, I write everything down in my notebook. And finally, my mum, Julie. She likes cooking, white wine, and Zumba. She's my hero. The leader of our pack who takes good care of us all. When she buys groceries, she always looks for products that are just right for each of our five individual tastes. But they have to be value for money, and that's a tough task. What Julie just experienced happens to millions of people every day. A choice overload leaves them feeling lost, confused and frustrated. Without choice, life would almost be unbearable. When people have more and more choice, as they do in our consumer-driven society, they feel empowered and free. But as the number of choices keeps growing, the downside starts to become more obvious. The negative aspects are more and more apparent until they start to weigh us down. Now, choice no longer means freedom. It becomes a maze and we become lost, confused, constantly worrying whether we've made the correct decision, frustrated.
seen this one before Can't see The perfect color anymore Wonder why I feel so lost Don't Even Need to count the cost Every time I claim, I feel really sick. Always something new, don't know what to do. I am so confused. Please know what I'm going to say. Problem, I'll say it anyway. I can buy this or I can buy that. I can buy this or I can buy that. I can choose this or I can choose that. I can choose that or nothing at all. Please know what we are going to say. The problem is choice, we'll say it anyway. Buying the wrong brand of coffee doesn't have major emotional or financial impact. But when people buy more expensive items that are meant to last, as the number of options increases, psychological stress rises significantly. Take Broadloom carpet, for example. Nothing beats carpet when it comes to creating ambience and comfort in your home. But choosing the right carpet can be downright difficult. Most carpet shops, like my uncle's shop, have an impressive collection of hundreds of carpet samples to choose from in all possible styles, colors, patterns, textures, fibers, and price points. But how to compare 50 shades of gray and 100 shades of beige carpet? And how to make a choice between cut pile, loop pile, Saxony, Frise, Berber, polypropylene, or polyamide? Most people also have a hard time visualizing the carpet in their home. Oh, yes. Combined with wallpaper, paintwork, curtains, and upholstery designs. Now, let's start by showing us our latest range. Sure, the sales staff will try to help them out. But all that choice makes it hard for the customer to see the wood for the trees. Perhaps you'd also like to see a range which we could have for, say, a bedroom. Now, we've got a full, nice, soft pastel Confusion, range. anxiety, doubt and buyer's remorse may be lurking around the corner. And after all these years, we finally met again. Archie! Archie Weaver! Douglas! He remembered me and my notebook from the supermarket. How are you? He told me he'd been teaching abroad at Princeton University where he had written a book about the abundance of choice. And what about you? What have you been doing these last 15 years? Oh, well, I've, I've, I've learnt a lot about people, about choice, um, about business. Have you got a minute? And I decided to show him what I'd been up to. Douglas, how are you? I haven't seen you since you came back from Princeton. Uncle, what's going on here? You've already met Archie, I see. My new partner. The man who's going to make me rich. <laughs> this man has a book of wonderful ideas. Let me show you. about more is less and less is more about taking away the customers doubts and worries but uncle is this real yes very real come this way and I'll show you 
Archie told me about engaging customer experience, about funneling the customer through your product offering towards that one carpet that perfectly matches his or her needs. I couldn't have said it better myself. This guy has made me 20 years younger. Let's have some fun.